room sign me out, but I'll have to work on it. The Zoom signed me out, but I'll I'll have to log in. It signed me out. Let's get started, and I'll I'll try to find it in. Okay. Okay. All right, welcome back to Baton Rouge, everyone. Side of the first and second round for the women's NCAA tournament. Time now to talk with the LSU Lady Tigers. Joining me on my far left is guard Haley Van Liff. And joining me to my immediate left is Angel Reese, named SEC Player of the Year, second team All-American by the Associated Press, and first team All-American by the USBWA. Congratulations you. on your honor. Uh, as always, please raise your hand uh, and address which player you're asking your question to. We'll bring a mic around to you because we are streaming this. Uh, so if you will also introduce yourself and your affiliation. And with that, we'll open up the floor to questions for either Haley or Angel. Uh, Michael Cobble, WBRC TV in Baton Rouge. Uh, this is for Angel. Um, just going into it this year as opposed to last year, how differently does it feel for you? And, and what is different for you? Um, of course, last year we didn't have really any expectations, of course. Um, of course, coming th into this year, we have a national championship projected number. We were number one coming in this year. Um, took a couple losses this year, but finished out the year strong. So it's definitely different, um, a different feeling now. I feel like more of a chip on our shoulder this year going into it. Um, but I think our team is gelling at the right time, and I feel super comfortable. Last year's team, I didn't really know how far we would really go. We knew what we had, but this year's team, I feel like we, we know what we have at this point, and now it's just when to go home. Uh, Matthew Bruneth on three. Uh, Haley, just the steps forward y'all have taken as a team defensively and y you specifically, just where is y'all's conf confidence level at and how do you feel like y'all have taken those steps forward? Yeah, I mean, I think the main thing was just time with each other um, and time in practice and an emphasis on building that part of our team. Um, I think at the beginning of the season, we were caught up in how well we could score and how fun that was and we neglected the other side of the game. And um, you know we were real with ourselves. We recognized that that was something we needed to fix. And then we fixed it. So it was pretty simple. Uh, and Angel, um, just the rest that y'all have been able to get over the past couple weeks. I know you said after the game you could play right away. But uh, how <laughs> valuable has that been? And how valuable has the practice time been? Yeah, it's been great. I mean, being able to come back, our, our goal, of course, was to play home. And being able to come back home and play these two games um, is going to be amazing for us and amazing for LSU and co the community and what we are able to do. Pack another game out. I believe the game is sold out tomorrow. So being able to come back, rest up, um, rest up some of the nagging injuries that we had, and then being able to collectively come, ag come together and just focus on what we're known to be. And defense is something that we've been really emphasizing on, and I'm just happy where we are defensively. Hi there, Brett Martel with AP. Um, more of a general women's basketball question. Have either of you, at this point in your careers, had any discussions with either advisors or agents about the financial wisdom of WNBA versus staying in school? And if you have had those conversations, kind of what have you learned from those? Um, for me, I've honestly learned that regardless, I'm going to be able to make money um, staying or going. Um, understanding that my brain has been built where I know that more than being in college is something that I can do. Um, like, I, like I have a brain outside of here where the deals are going to follow me if I leave or stay. And I've built that that relationship with a lot of these brands. I don't just have brands that are in college. I've had brands that are long-term deals that are just past college. And I think that's the difference. Like one of my Reebok deal, and I'm sure Haley's Adidas deal, that's going to go on past college. So, of course, we may not have the same benefits of the same training rooms, the commercial flights and stuff like that. And I think, of course, that's, that's the con of everything. But it's a win or lose situation regardless of the decision that we're going to make. But you have to make a sacrifice in understanding what, is, what you want and what it's going to take. Yeah, I think um, goes along the same line as that. You kind of have to look at what type of player you are. Um, there's some people that have to capitalize in college because they're not a pro type player. Um, their likability is going to stay in college. And I think for me, um, that's not the case. I'm a pro type player. Like the deals will follow, like Angel said. And I mean, the one downfall really also is like visibility and the amount of times we play on ESPN and, and ABC and all these major television channels. Um, that becomes a lot less when you go to the WNBA where it's at right now. 
Um, so, you know, you're not going to be in the media as much, but from a brand aspect, um, as long as you do what you need to do and, and keep up that part of your life, then brands, they're, they're going to follow you when you go to the league. Those are good answers. <laughs> Uh, we stay with Haley just for a second. Just if Poa can't play, uh, what does the guard position look like for the start of the tournament, and how comfortable are you guys executing in that way? Yeah, I mean, I think at this point, if if Poa can't play, I'm gonna have to be the primary point guard. Um, which, if that's what needs to be done, then that's what needs to be done. We're at the part of the season where you know, if something has to happen, you just got to get it done. And whether if that is me being a traditional point guard and not scoring that much. Like, I'm just trying to get to the next round. And that's what it is at this point. I'm too old for all that other stuff. Like, I just want to help my team win. And um, we would love to have Poa. She helps our team a lot in a lot of different ways. But the reality is, if she can't play, then we need to adjust. Chessa Boucher with NBC 33 here in Baton Rouge for both of y'all. Rice is playing their best basketball round one. Obviously, you've got to get through round one to make it to round two. But what do you expect to see from this team, from both y'all, from the post position and the guard position? Yeah, I mean, they have a big post, a big body post um, down there. We watched a lot of film on them. Just being able to understand our versatility and use that as our advantage. For I'm speaking from the, uh, the post position. Um, I think they do a great job being able to stretch out. Their four player is like a guard, um, probably be a guard on any other team. Um, super versatile and just understanding our matchups is going to be super important. But on the defensive side, just being able to help our guards as much as we can, I think that's what has gotten us this far um, so far. Just being able to be there for our guards and helping them with our guards. They have a great left hand point guard, which is really good. So just doing whatever it takes to win is going to be important. Yeah, I mean, I think you see with these smaller schools in the beginning of the tournament, um, they're going to be smaller than us, um, but they they are very versatile. They, they have a stretch four. Um, they can shoot on the perimeter. Our bigs are going to have to come out and go, be able to guard, which we know they can. We have very athletic bigs that can move their feet. Um, and yeah, there's, there's certain challenges to it, but we also have advantages um, that we're going to capitalize on, the size, the athleticism, um, the experience at this level. Um, and yeah, we're very excited to play them. Corey Diaz with the USA Today Sports Network. Haley, for you, you've been on teams in the past that have made deep runs in the NCAA tournament. So I'm curious of your perspective of, of this LSU team, what you, what you remember about those teams and their makeup versus what you got now here at LSU. Does it compare, contrast, and do you think this team is, is built for a deep run? Yeah, I mean, I, in my experience, um, when I feel good about our team, it's that we're peaking at the right time. Like, you can play good at the beginning of the season, but if you're not peaking at the end, like, it's not going to happen for you in the tournament. you got to be peaking, and everyone has to be on the same level, and everyone has to be bought in to what the objective of this team is. And um, like my year when we made the Final Four run, um, we were peaking at the right time. And everyone on the team was bought into winning. And we were committed to whatever my role had to be for that game to get to the next round. Like that's what everyone was going to do. And I really think we're at a point with this team where people are willing to do that. Um, and you know, that's what you need. So I'm happy with it. I'm sorry. Scott Rappelet with the advocate. Uh, Haley, uh, we all saw your reaction when you saw Louisville's name pop up on the thing. What, what, what were you thinking? Like, uh, you, did you just say, I know the committee was going to do this? <laughs> I mean, what, what, what did you think? And uh, uh, Mar Marissa Russell was in here earlier, and she said y'all were roommates. Yeah. Uh, just what is your reaction to them being here where you are now? Yeah, I mean, I think um, most of the reaction was I wasn't even thinking of that. Like, that wasn't what was going through my mind at that time. Um, so it was more of like a surprise. Um, but yeah, me and Marissa are really close. Um, that's a relationship that I'll have for the rest of my life. Um, she's a great friend of mine, and you know, I love to support her in any way I can. But um, you know, I'm a competitor, and if the time comes to compete, then I compete. Uh, if both y'all could answer this, but we'll start with uh, Haley. Just um, Anissa's play this year, and how valuable has it been to your game and into your game? If you could answer that. Yeah, I think uh, for me, at least in a pick and roll situation, Anissa is unique because she can pick and pop. Um, and and she can do a few different things. 
um, out of options with that, and I can give her the ball in unique places because she can create um, farther from the basket, and um, she has a little bit more of a guard skill set um, with her size. And so, um, yeah, I mean, it's been it's been challenging learning. I've never really played with a player like that, so it's been challenging for me as a as a point guard to learn how to help make her successful the best way that I can. And so, you know, that's been something that I've been grateful for, the opportunity to learn to play with someone like her. Um, I mean, I feel like I've said this before. Anissa's not a second team player. She's not an honorable mention player. And I think sometimes she gets overshadowed because of me. And it's tough. And I, I hate that. I hate that for her. Um, but she works hard. She makes me better every day. We don't go as far as we do and as far as we've been without Anissa. Her defense, her work ethic, she works hard every day. I mean, she doesn't complain about anything. She always comes in and just has a mindset that she wants to get better every day. So being able to have a player like that, a teammate like that, a sister like that, where you just love to have her. You always want to have somebody like that on your team, but you don't want to go against her. Uh, Brett Martell again with AP, and this is for Angel. How would you, would you say you would summarize kind of the arc of your season so far in terms of not just adjusting to uh, an, a number of new high-profile teammates and figuring out your role among them, but also just how much fame you came into this season with versus last year and managing all that? Yeah, I mean, um, it just goes back into what our theme for the year is, Dig Deep Roots. And we talked about that from the beginning of the season. We know our most of our statuses. We know everything that we come with, the fame, everything that comes with. We have to just put that to the side and understand what it's going to take to win. And I think in the beginning of the season, like Haley said, we focused so, so, focused so much on offense, 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 and we neglected defense, 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 and what it's going to take. We can't just beat these teams and outscore these teams. Like, these teams are actually really good, and they will out they can outscore you, and we've seen that earlier on in the season. Our first game out the gate, Colorado, they killed us. Um, we didn't play any defense offensively. We were struggling. So just being able to see us being able to put everything else to the side, not care about stats, not care about personal goals, and understand what it's going to take to win a national championship. We didn't have the most talented team last year to win the championship. And this year we have one of the most talented teams in the country. So it's going to be a difference and it's, it's a different shift to understanding like what it's really going to take to win this thing. And like he was saying earlier, like if Poa can't go, we won a national championship because of the bench. Me, Alexis, and Jazz didn't play really much that Iowa game. The the I mean yeah, me, Alexis and KP didn't play Jazz. Poa came in, that bench is going to be what's going to be important. And coach keeps emphasizing, like, Janae, we're going to need you. Aaliyah, we're going to need you. Everybody from the bench, we're going to need you guys. So just understanding what it's going to take to win is just going to be really, really important at the end. I'll right, we'll stay with Angel. Just uh, Michaela, not being in this position, like, what, what do you tell her as, you know, as this thing gets started? Um, I think Flage honestly can be to somebody that can tell her how to feel in this um, – She's a starter. Flage was a starter last year. One of the best freshmen in the country. Her and Flage were both freshmen in the country. So just being able to kind of relax. I mean, it's overwhelming. Your first tournament, um, being able to be home. She's in Louisiana, which is home. I remember being at Maryland and hosting home for the first time. So I know her nerves are built up. She wants to do great. But again, like I said, she has dropped everything to understand what it's going to take to win defensively, being able to be in the stands and understanding her matchups as a freshman. And I think she's done a great job doing that. Haley and Angel, thank you all very much. Your time is up. We've got practice coming up for you at uh, 110. Okay. Thank you all. Good luck to you both. Thank you. For the tournament. Head coach Kim Mulkey will be here in five minutes. LSU's practice starts at 110. Again, first 15 minutes will be open to the media. We'll be back here in five minutes with LSU head coach Kim Mulkey.
Welcome back to Baton Rouge as we continue talking for the LSU Lady Tigers, who are sit at 26 and 4 in the season, last year's national champions, making the 29th appearance in the NCAA tournament. We are pleased to be joined by head coach Kim Mulkey. Again, for those that are here with us, a microphone will come to you. Please introduce yourself, your affiliation for coach, and if you're joining us via Zoom, if you have a question, if you'll toggle the hand up, we will get to you. And with that, uh, coach, welcome. Congratulations again, and we will open up the floor for questions for head coach Kim Mulkey. Hey, Kim, Corey Diaz with the USA Today Sports Network. I just wanted to ask you about last year, POA. It, is she available tomorrow? Do you anticipate her being ready to go? Yes, she should be available unless something has changed overnight. She did practice um, yesterday. So if you're out there practicing, I'm assuming you're cleared. But honestly, I didn't even ask. We just went to work. So unless something has happened um, between yesterday's practice and today, I assume I'll see her today, and she'll be good to go. Yeah, Coach. Oh, Matthew Bruni on three. Um, Rice obviously won the tournament, four straight games there. Just where did you start with your uh, evaluation of them and, and where they attack? Well, we certainly watched the four games of the tournament. Um, I'm very familiar with Rice's uh, coaching staff. Two of my former managers at Baylor are assistant coaches for them, so they're going to know a lot more about my philosophy and things we do probably than I will uh, what they do, but I'm very proud of them. Um, they had to win the tournament to, um, to get in, it looks like, and uh, when you win four games and your back's against the wall, that means you're playing pretty good basketball. And I anticipate like I do all games, that they will play their best, and we will hopefully play our best. They play majority of uh, man. Seen some 1-3-1 one, one zone trapping in the corners on the baseline. And uh, I'm going to screw up names, but their point guard and their four player are pretty darn good basketball players. But they don't just stand out. They're a very balanced team. They make about six threes a game. and. Um, It'll be exciting for them. It'll be exciting for us. And um, Angel was kind of talking about it, but Plage's approach uh, this year, obviously compared to last year, where it was just a new um, environment for her. Uh, what have you seen uh, from that so far? Maturity. Uh, and when it's, it's kind of hard to realize that the word maturity and being a sophomore go hand in hand with Flage, but it really does. Uh, the experience she gained last year, um, not just playing time, but just just the environment of the NCAA tournament. Um, she's just a lot more um, poised and mature in her approach. I think she's playing her best basketball of the year. And um, it's, Flage is just a joy. When you watch her play, she has a joy about her. And you can't take your eyes off of her. Reed Darcy, the advocate. Um, Coach Anissa has talked about, you know, part of the reason why she came here was to play in the tournament. So what, what are you hoping to see from her, and, and how do you think she can help you uh, make a run? Maro, um, she just had an unbelievable year. Um, to, to be a, a new player, whether you're a freshman or a transfer, to fit in comfortably, it's, it takes time. And I think that she has um, fit in comfortably quicker than I thought that she would. And a lot of that has to do with um, her energy. She just has a motor. And she, she starts the game the same way she finishes it. I'm sure she gets tired, but I don't look on the floor and think I got to get her off the floor. She's tired. Um, she's an undersized post player that uh, can get up with the best of them in that pain area, uh, and yet she could guard you on the perimeter if she needs to. Um, and this is exactly why she came. She told me she wanted to get to the postseason. Chesson Boucher with NBC 33 here in Baton Rouge. Coach Mulkey, your philosophy is defensive rebounding, defense and rebounding. Both Angel and Haley said that in the start of the season, for them, it was all about points. And now they feel like they're playing their best basketball defensively. Do you agree with that? Yes. And I don't want it to, I hope they didn't come across and sound very selfish. I've said all along, we can score the ball. On our worst day, I've got that many scores. 
but we um, we had to buy in to be a better defensive team. Rebounding was going to be okay because you had Angel back. You knew that was a walking double double, and then you add Morrow to the mix. We lose some Maya, so then you add Aaliyah to the mix. Um, I just have always thought if we're going to go very far in the playoffs, we have to get better through the course of the year defensively. And I think that's where our most improvement has been, is that um, nobody likes defense. When you have that many scores on a team, I doubt any of them had to be the defensive stopper growing up. But if we can do it collectively, if we can help each other, if we can take pride in it and get excited about it as much as we do the offensive end, I think you can have a, a good season and a, and a good run in the playoffs. And um, um, it's new for them. Um, maybe not so much Angel as it was, you, I think you said Haley. Um, Haley has to defend at a new position up top as a point guard. And uh, then I asked her to go to the off guard when Poe was in the game. So, um, and hold them accountable. I mean, just really have those practices where we don't pick up a basketball. Hey, Coach, Brianna Anderson with Tiger TV. Angel mentioned earlier that last year they didn't have the national championship team, but this year they have the talent and they have like the people for it. How do you feel, what's the difference between last year's team and this year's team going into the first game of the tournament? I think last year nobody, <laughs> nobody was talking about us getting to a Final Four. I think people were saying, just go one step further than you did the year before. Nobody was ever talking about our team being good enough to get to a Final Four, and I think it just started snowballing. I think when you win the national championship or you get to a Final Four, then expectations, whether it's fair or not, they think you're supposed to do it again. I don't know if it can be done again. Certainly that's a goal of ours, and we do have talent to do it, but it takes a lot of things to go right to do it. And you have to be playing your best basketball. You got to stay away from injuries. Um, you got to have just a tiny bit of luck on the way, some play that goes your way. And um, we'll see. I know we'll play hard. I know that um, our culture is whatever happens, we're going to go down fighting. That's just how we are. We just fight for every loose ball. We fight for every rebound. We fight for. Um, just the tip off, we fight for the jump ball. And uh, if you do that, you can live with whatever happens. Yeah, Matthew Brunis on three. Um, just Michaela's progress uh, over the past couple weeks, getting her back into shape, getting her ready to play. How has that uh, been going? She hasn't missed a beat in practice. She's been out there every possession. And, um, you know, Michaela to me is one of the best um, mid range shooters that I've ever coached. And um, she can shoot the three ball. She can take you hard and be strong off the dribble. But um, she's got to she's got to get back in the flow on the floor during a game. And uh, I thought we gave her enough minutes in the SEC championship. She hit some buckets uh, in that game. And if you ask Michaela, she'll tell you she she needed to do more. And um, that's what competitors do. So this will be her first uh, shot at a playoff game. So. Hopefully she'll be excited and uh, have those butterflies and then do what she does, and that's play basketball. Uh, Michael Cobble, WBRZ-TV. Um, both of the girls that were in here, Angel and Haley, talked about peaking at the right time, and, and it's something that you've mentioned over the last couple of weeks, I guess. Just how much do you see that, that fight and that extra effort in your team now here There's, down the stretch? Well, I certainly saw it throughout and, and through the SEC championship. Now we've been off about how many days now, so I don't know really if we'll be rusty or not. Uh, but that's why I said after the game, I wish we could go play quickly because you want to keep that. So hopefully uh, that'll carry over into um, the playoffs. But we have had a little time in between that run and, and the next game. So um, and you got to be careful on the floor, how much you do on the floor, particularly when you're trying to heal players. So hopefully um, we're still where we were when we played in that championship game. Coach, you mentioned your, your team's talent. Um, and I'm curious, you know, if you look back, you know, some of your Baylor teams over the years, what sets this team apart in terms of talent from some of your other, you know, talented teams that made a deep run to the tournament? Well, you don't compare teams. 
Well, that'd be, as I tell y'all, like comparing your children. What are some qualities that this team has? Um, if you're thinking about those teams you coached that went to Final Fours and won championships, one, you better have talent. We have the talent. Um, the second thing that's very important is experience. Do we have enough experience? I don't know. When you think of experienced players, the majority of those that get minutes, I can only think of Angel Reese and Flage. Morrow doesn't have this experience. Haley had a Final Four experience with Louisville. And then Michaela, being a freshman, Poa has that experience. So you have a, um, I guess, a good balance of experience, but you sure would like to have more. Um, so I think those two things um, take you through the playoffs. I also think you have to have good guard play. Uh, as good as Angel uh, is and as good as Morrow and all those guys, you know, they're really uh, reliant on guard play. And um, the guards have to get them the ball. When they rebound the ball, the guards have to bring it up the floor. Uh, so I think you have to have good guard play in order for um, your team to go far. Now, what is good guard play? It's different for each team. Some, play, some teams need a lot of scoring from their guards. Some teams just need game management, just get the ball where it's supposed to be. We, um, we can score the ball. So if we're scoring the ball at the guard spot and those guys inside are scoring the ball and rebounding, and um, it, it makes it tough for people to guard us. Uh, the girls also talked about defense, and Angel specifically said we're not going to win by outscoring people. How pleased are you to hear that message coming through to your, from your players that you know, their defensive intensity is what's gotten, to, gotten them to this point? I think that I've said all along we can score the ball, but against good defensive teams, you you got to be able to defend too. And I think we've learned um, from some of the losses we've had this year. Um, there are other teams out there that can play. There's other teams out there that can defend. And when you meet those teams, you better be able to match that defensive intensity. How important is it going to be for your bench in this postseason run? How important is what? The play from your bench. Oh, listen, in the perfect world, you want to play eight or nine players. We, we lost that. We lost that early in the year. Um, so what you're, you're having happen now is you're, you're pretty much going eight if you play Janae and, and Poa coming off the bench, and then you got Aaliyah. So two of those coming off the bench and one on the floor are freshmen, true freshmen. And so I know that their nerves will be um, kind of fresh and, and, and exciting. And yet you hope they settle in and, um, and help you win a ball game or two. Hey, Kim. Brett Martell Hi. with AP. How are you? Good. Um, so NIL question. Uh, I don't know if you saw Saban's comments, but just wondering, is there anything about that, because there's so much of it here, that has made the job more difficult or less fun for you in any way, or you just you just kind of. I didn't embrace. see his comments. Was that something in an article? You got to remember, I don't read y'all stuff. If it's something <laughs> that uh, somebody sends me that I can use to motivate a team, um, I know he retired. Um, so tell me what you're referring to. Yeah, he he was essentially saying that um, he felt like it had changed the athletes and their families' priorities a lot in terms of developing as students and men and football players. And it's really just all about like, well, what can I get, you know, and so forth. And I just wanted, and so it made it less rewarding for him as a coach, I guess. And I don't know to what extent it, how does it affect, how do you, how do you feel like it's affected women's basketball or your job? Well, how old is Saban? Would he say that if he was 45 or 50? I don't know. I think if you're young and, um, you know, it's the rules set before you, you have to adjust. I think LSU adjusted to NIL before I was ever hired. I, I was hearing stuff about, what was it, NILSU. Um, but that doesn't mean his feelings are not real. That doesn't mean his feelings are not shared by many people. Um, but gosh, through the years of my coaching, you, you have to adjust and adapt to the three-point line, to the smaller basketball, to being on television more, to be. 
I just am of the belief that if you're going to coach, you better adjust. If you don't feel like you can, then you hope you can retire just like he did and walk out in a blaze of glory. Coach, thank you for your time. You bet. Appreciate it. LSU's uh -huh. practice starts at 110 on the floor. First 15 minutes will be open to the media. We will be back here at 205 for our next round of press conferences. We'll have players from Middle Tennessee. Until then, have a good afternoon. We'll see you back here in Baton Rouge.